So let's talk about this required practical all to do with looking into the emission and absorption of infrared radiation. Now, just as a quick recap before we start, uh, infrared radiation is the one that gets given out by things that are hot. They give out infrared radiation, IR radiation, and like if you put your hands in front of it, your hands start to feel hot because they are absorbing infrared radiation from the fire. It's, it's adding energy to your hands and increasing their temperature. Now, the most common way I've seen this practical done is with something called a Leslie cube. Now, that was a cube that was devised by a gentleman called Leslie, so it does exactly what it says on the tin. And it looks a little something like this. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at a cube and it has four different surfaces. So this is photographed from both, both sides. Okay. So this first side over here, that one, that is a matte black surface, okay? By matte, I mean uh, dull, in case you didn't know. This over here, this one there, that's a shiny metallic surface. Uh, just here, this one just there, that is white. And this one over here, although you might not believe me, uh, is actually shiny black. Uh, it just doesn't look black because of light reflecting off it and making it look lighter in the photo. So we've got four surfaces, matte black, shiny metallic, white and shiny black. And what you are going to do is, or maybe what you have done, is you are going to look at the emission of infrared radiation from these different surfaces. So how do you use this equipment? Well, it's really rather straightforward. You get a kettle, you boil it up, and then you put some hot water in the top. Remember this is the same cube from, from either side, so I, I guess you could say that's, that's the same hole there that you're putting hot water into. And now you need to measure the infrared radiation coming off of these sides. Now, you could do it in a couple of ways. You could get yourself a glass thermometer, and then you could paint the end black and then um, you could put it nearby to to measure uh, temperature that way so you've got a glass thermometer uh, your other option is to use a, a infrared thermometer oops infrared th <laughs> red thermometer and by far and away this is the one that I have seen uh, used most commonly. Now, the question is, why is the one that I've seen used most commonly this one and not the glass one? Well, it's all to do with precision and accuracy and resolution. So, let's start off <clears throat> with the idea of resolution. So, if you remember, uh, resolution is the smallest amount uh, measurable by that particular device. So if you look at my digital thermometer, my infrared thermometer, you'll notice that it does decimal places. So this one has got a resolution of 0 0.1 degrees C. The glass thermometer, uh, which you can just see, I can't blow this up any bigger because the resolution goes all wonky. Like the gap between two of those marks there is 1 degree C. So the uh, infrared thermometer has a lot uh, it is a lot higher. You can point that, uh, yeah, the resolution is a lot higher. You can point that at a side and get a pretty good measurement. And by pretty good, I am talking about accuracy, as in close to the true value. That, that extra resolution and the fact that it doesn't rely on a human being uh, putting their eye up against it and trying to measure it um, makes it uh, more accurate. That in turn, the fact that you don't have a human being um, tr squinting at a little line of alcohol or, or uh, mercury inside a thermometer helps to mean that your precision has gone up as well. So it's, this is how close are the results together. By eliminating human beings, you are getting rid of, or at least reducing, random error. 
And if you are reducing random error because you don't have a person wading in and uh, misreading it, then your results will be more precise and close together. Okay. So you then do this experiment, you stick your hot water in, and then you see what result you get. And your results will look a little bit something like this. So I almost feel like you need a drum roll for this. From the bottom to the top. So we're going to go from... Um, that's increasing infrared emission. So giving out infrared radiation. So at the very bottom, the worst surface is the shiny metallic surface. Uh, next, next one up is uh, the white surface. Next one up after that is the shiny black surface. And finally after that, the matte black surface. That being the one that emits the most infrared radiation when hot. Now this is quite nice, quite a nice little experiment when you think about things like um, variables, let's say. So what variables would you need to consider? Well, you would need to make sure that the all uh, all of the uh, the faces of the cube were heated to the same degree. Now that's easy because um, you've put in the same hot water. Uh, into the cube, so they all, all have access to that same thermal store in the water. So, so the temp inside needs to be the same, but that kind of controls itself. The big one though is distance, especially if you are using the uh, infrared thermometer. You need to make sure that you control the distance, so it can't be one centimeter away one go and then 10 centimeters away the next go. It, that's got to be controlled. So those are your biggies. So, um, that is the experiment on how you look into emission, but how about absorption? How about soaking up infrared? Well, for this, you are going to need some different equipment. So this here is a heater. So it's going to be an electric heater of some kind. So something that gives that infrared radiation. And then you can have some, let's say, two metal plates. So on this side of this one, you could paint it... Uh, dull black and on the other side of this one you could leave it shiny metallic and then you could get your infrared thermometer and you could take a measurement of the plates and you could see how hot they'd got how much infrared they had absorbed and look at the difference between the two again thinking about things in terms of variables we're looking at well, yeah, distance is the big one, but not just distance of the thermometer, because of course you've got to control that. We talked about that, the distance of the plates from the heater. You can't have one plate right on top of it and the other one further away. And then once you've tested out your different plates, you will find that funnily enough that this order is conserved like so. And that's increasing infrared IR absorption. So matte black up there is the best at both absorbing and emitting infrared. And your shiny metallic down here at the bottom is the worst of the four surfaces uh, at emitting and absorbing infrared. So it's, it holds true for both of them, which is, which is quite neat. Thank you very much.